And good morning. I want to thank you for joining us today in this beautiful, newly renovated Majin Theater. I know Chancellor Mitchell is out there. There you are. Uh, thank you for being here in Regent Cash. But I, I, I appreciate each and every one of you being here. And welcome to those of you who are watching online. It's an honor to stand before you at this moment, a time when Texas Tech is very much at a turning point. This critical moment will set the tone for this institution's future, how it will change the lives of those in Texas and this nation, and how together we will make an even greater impact showing the world what Texas Tech is all about. A century ago, I'm certain few envision how an institution located here would one day emerge as a world-class university drawing students from every state in this nation and from more than 100 countries around the globe. At a time when American confidence in higher education, according to many polls, is at a historic low, Texas Tech is on an upward trajectory, continuing to grow with a purpose in areas including enrollment, research, and fundraising. Our students must always remain at the forefront. That's what Texas Tech has always been about. We are here to educate and graduate students with the skills and the quality of mind to be leaders who get things done. People with the capabilities to solve global challenges and thrive in a 21st century democracy. As universities are increasingly scrutinized for a variety of reasons, we have thousands of compelling stories for why we do what we do. And I want to begin by sharing a few stories of some of our remarkable students. Anicia Hernandez, who you see here, is one of five siblings. She cares for some of them while working two jobs and attending Texas Tech as a full-time student majoring in sociology. She serves as a student ambassador for the College of Arts and Sciences and as a member of the High Riders. And she's logged hundreds of volunteer hours toward our one million hour centennial service initiative. Anicia aspires to become a forensic investigator for the FBI. Ludwig Aberg is making international headlines today. And while he was at Texas Tech, he established himself as one of the most decorated athletes in our history. A native of Sweden, Ludwig had one of the most impressive seasons for any collegiate golfer, which led him to make his PGA Tour debut less than two weeks after earning his PGA Tour card at the 2023 NCAA Championships. Honored with both the Jack Nicholas and Fred Haskin Awards as the nation's top collegiate golfer, Ludwig also co collected two consecutive Ben Hogan Awards and is the only player in history to earn back-to-back -back individual medalist honors at the Big 12 Conference Championships. Celia Sotidate is a second-year graduate student in the College of Media and Communication. She made history in Afghanistan by becoming a broadcast news anchor, a role historically held by men. In 2013, she was named Journalist of the Year by the Afghanistan Senate, and a year later, Best Reporter by the Afghan Parliament. After fleeing her country in August 2021, Saleya has rebuilt a life for herself here in the United States. She says she's grateful for the opportunities provided her at Texas Tech, and in particular, being able to conduct research which she hopes will change the lives of many women in the Middle East as she recounts the stories of Afghan women. These three students, from different backgrounds, with different aspirations, exemplify the traits known to all Red Raiders, perseverance, hard work, and determination. We have highly successful students at Texas Tech, 
and the characteristics and demographics of our first year class reflect that. This year, we welcomed a record incoming class, more than 7,200 students. One third are first generation, about 31% are pale eligible, and more than a quarter were in the top 10% of their high school class. And that incoming class is part of a record overall enrollment for Texas Tech, 40,944 students. While those numbers are impressive, we're particularly proud of the progress we have made in our graduation rates. In the last five years, our four-year graduation rate has risen to, four, nearly, to over 49%, and the six-year rate has increased to 64%. These rates are 12 and 4 percentage points greater than those of just five years ago. A question I often get is, how large will Texas Tech become? Our recent growth has been very measured. Currently, we're developing a long-term strategic enrollment plan that will guide our plans for growth. This will take into consideration many factors, including the capacity of our colleges and departments, student demand, career opportunities for graduates, and the demographics of our state and nation. It is well known that the number of high school graduates will be decreasing across the country, including here in Texas. We want to have a plan that not only ensures our financial stability, but is cognizant of all the different market pressures that bear upon how we recruit. In the future, we anticipate seeing greater enrollment of non-traditional students, especially those who have some college credit but no degree. Much of that curriculum will be delivered online and additional access will be provided through our new center in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. As we move forward, we must always prioritize our students and continue to support them in ways that are essential to their success and which distinguishes the Texas Tech experience. Our ability to enhance the support services of our students is due in part to our stable and healthy financial situation. As we conclude our first century, the state has invested in Texas Tech in ways that set a new standard for the next century. The results of this past legislative session place upon us an even greater onus to seize what is before us, to plan and execute for the use of the funds we've received. In this recent legislative session, Texas Tech saw a substantial increase in its allocation of instructional funding, thanks in large part to the growth of our graduate school and the increased numbers due to the first two classes that have been admitted to the Texas Tech School of Veterinary Medicine in Amarillo. We also received continued and now permanent support through institutional enhancement funds, $50 million over the biennium to support investment in academic excellence, student and faculty success, and research. In some ways, the student stories I shared a few minutes ago are tied to the significance of this moment and these resources. All of our students, faculty and staff, are deserving of such investment. They make the case every day for the value of a college education. During this last legislative session, legislation was passed that established the Texas University Fund which created an endowment of $3.9 billion. The Texas University Fund, or TUF, is pending voter approval in November. If approved, Texas Tech would have access to a portion of the endowment proceeds beginning next spring. The initial distribution to Texas Tech is projected to be approximately $44 million in that first disbursement. With anticipated support from the TUF, we will have an opportunity to significantly increase our investments in research. Planning is underway to ensure that TUF investments 
are aligned with current university strengths and priorities, such as energy, agriculture, sustainability, and One Health, while also supporting growth in research expenditures and scholarly activities that position us to attain the benchmarks of the Association of American Universities. The TUF will help us attract federal and private research funding and will also enhance the economic development and the innovation in our state. Between now and November, part of our task is to communicate to voters in Texas the benefits of a, of a preeminent research university like Texas Tech. Looking forward to the election in November, we can be proud of the growth of our research enterprise. Over the past five years, federal awards to Texas Tech have increased by more than 75%. This past year, we exceeded $230 million in total research expenditures. As an institution, we are focused on building federal research expenditures to a point that compares favorably with top public universities across this na nation. But our research progress is more than a story of expenditures and grant awards. Most importantly are the people, the students, the faculty, and the staff, who through their creative activity and research make a difference to our state and nation in ways that improve the quality of life. That group includes faculty members like Krishna Jagadish. Krishna hasn't been on campus long, but his impact has already been felt. A Thornton Distinguished Chair in the Department of Plant and Soil Science, Krishna is director of both the Texas Tech Alliance for Water Conservation and the Davis College Water Center. He has helped secure nearly $11 million in research funding. His work focuses on making farms both more profitable and sustainable using new t technologies and rotational crops. The social sciences and the humanities are essential to the breadth of scholarly activity that distinguishes a world-class institution. Lynn Whitfield's work is an example of those contributions. Lynn has not only immersed herself in Texas Tech's history, she's become part of it. Fleeing two countries and two wars as a child, she found herself on the Texas Tech campus as a graduate student in the early 1990s. Today, as a university archivist, she supports researchers from around the world who request original materials from Texas Tech's Southwest Collection, Special Collections Library. Lynn is the preserver of history and stories, a role never more appreciated than, than during our university's centennial. And then there's a trio of faculty members making another research project 50 years in the making. Professors Matt Johnson, Nick Smith, and Dylan Schwick are taking advantage of the resources in biology's E.L. Reed Herbarium. Utilizing the Guadalupe Mountains National Park, they have developed a project that could help inform future discussions about changes to the ecosystems of the area over the last half century. These stories represent a small fraction of the impactful work being done on this campus. There are more than 2,000 faculty members, supported by nearly 4,000 staff, working every day to meet our research and teaching missions. It's essential we provide them with the space and facilities to better support their work and their experiences. In the last five years, Texas Tech has invested more than $750 million in new and refurbished space on our campus. For example, this spring, we anticipate the opening of the Academic Sciences Building, a facility of more than 130,000 square feet. As we plan for the future of construction on campus, we want to be sure that our decisions are based on data that reflects need and use. 
We have engaged a firm to create a campus strategic plan looking at the usage of space as it relates to our education and research mission. We will be informed by social networks that tell us how students navigate this campus and how faculty interact with each other. And as we add faculty, we will take a critical look at the optimization of our space. We will conclude this process in the coming spring. But as we talk about facilities, we must not forget that our greatest resource is, of course, our people. Texas Tech is a rich, diverse community made so by many beliefs and life experiences. Each of us, in our unique way, contributes to this community. We're fortunate to be at a university where there's great alignment across colleges, departments, and units, and that includes athletics. Just as universities are facing challenges, there are many disruptive transformations occurring in the world of college athletics. For example, NIL, conference realignment, and possible revenue sharing, all of which require adaption and leadership. The Texas Tech experience, including that provided by highly competitive athletic programs, are, is a factor in our ability to recruit students, attract employees, and engage alumni. We value the contributions of our hundreds of Red Raiders student athletes, coaches, and administrators. As we pursue strategic planning, another critical factor to our success is compensation for those who work at Texas Tech. In recent years, we have provided faculty and staff with a series of merit, equity, and compression adjustments. We have also offered stipend increases for our graduate students and funded matching programs for graduate assistants. At the forefront of our priorities will be continued support for our employees who work each day to advance this institution. Here are a few examples of the dedicated service provided by our staff. Recently, Texas Tech's Exceptional Grounds Maintenance Team was recognized for its work on the R7 Pedestrian Mall Landscaping, earning an honor award in the Professional Grounds Management Society's 2022 Green Star Awards. The annual Green Star Award recognizes something we all know. We have one of the most beautiful campuses in the United States, and this team has much to do with that. Carrie Moore is the principal of TTU K-12, a role she served in since 2015. Her work is unique in that it brings students into the Texas Tech community before they are actually college students. She's expanded the reach and impact of this institution by serving students whose lifestyles vary from the traditional K-12 student. Recently, Carrie was recognized for her work when she was presented the Phenomenal Women of Texas Tech Award <clears throat> and named a top Texan. And I'd like to highlight the Office of Sustainability. Together with Accounting Services, they earned a Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System Civil Recognition. This achievement shows Texas Tech's dedication to sustainable practices on our campus, and the collaborative nature of this award emphasizes that it is a campus-wide effort. Texas Tech's story is that of amazing people who in their own time and in their own way move this university forward. This was demonstrated on our second annual day of giving. In about 32 hours, 1,425 people from 35 states donated more than $430,000, surpassing the fundraising goal by more than $130,000. It's reflective of the generous nature of Red Raiders and university supporters, nearly 40,000 of them who gave more than $161 million this past year in support of our key priorities. Because of these gifts, we created 102 new endowments 
that will support Texas Tech in perpetuity. As we begin our second century, we will continue to build on this momentum as we announce our first comprehensive campaign next year. We are three years into the silent phase of the campaign, and we've already raised a bit more than a half a billion dollars. But this campaign will not be about a number. This campaign will be about the impact that it will have on our students, our academics, and our athletic programs, our faculty, and resources that support the university community. Every college and university regards itself as special. Each owes to its history the presence of distinctive characteristics that remain embedded in a culture that, however modified and refined, retain the imprints of its origins and early development, a kind of institutional DNA. This is a quote from a book titled An Academic Life by Hannah Holborn Gray, former president of the University of Chicago and former acting president of Yale. We often say Texas Tech is special. In many ways, we are a family. <clears throat> one that is characterized by an unpretentious nature, an exemplary work ethic, a can-do attitude, pride, and individualism. The circumstances for beginning our second century could hardly be better, and the lasting benefit will depend on how we seize the opportunities in front of us and tell our story in a way that significantly enhances the stature and brand of Texas Tech University. Our progress in the first century has been a collective effort of faculty, staff, students, and alumni. Bound by our love of this institution, I challenge you to continue to work together to address the changing needs of our world, to broaden our impact, and to always strive for honor. We are steadfast in our belief that the best is yet to come, and from here, it's possible.